Inflammatory Bowel Disease Inflammatory Bowel Disease is an umbrella term used to describe disorders that involve chronic inflammation of your digestive tract. Types of inflammatory bowel disease include ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, and indeterminate colitis. Ulcerative colitis, this condition involves inflammation and sores along the superficial lining of your large intestine and rectum. Crohn's disease, this type of inflammatory bowel disease is characterized by inflammation of the lining of your digestive tract which often can involve the deeper layers of the digestive tract. And the third is indeterminate colitis. If it's hard to distinguish if it's an ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. Ulcerative colitis. This condition causes inflammation in the large intestine or colon. There are several different classes of ulcerative colitis depending on location and severity. Ulcerative proctitis. This type occurs when inflammation stays within the rectum. It tends to be the mildest form of ulcerative colitis. Universal colitis or pancolitis. This type occurs when inflammation spreads across the entire colon. Proctosigmoiditis. This type occurs when the rectum and lower end of the colon experience inflammation. Distal colitis. This type occurs when inflammation extends from the rectum and up the left colon. Acute severe ulcerative colitis. This is a rare type that causes inflammation across the entire colon, leading to severe symptoms and pain. Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease can affect any part of the digestive tract between the mouth and the anus. However, it most commonly develops in the final section of the small intestine and colon. Crohn's disease. This type of inflammatory disease has, be has become more common over time. They also suggest that Crohn's disease is most likely to develop when a person is age 20 to 29. Comparing inflammatory bowel disease and inflammatory bowel syndromes. There are sometimes similarities between IBS and IBD. For example, they can both lead to changing bowel habits and pain in the abdomen. The symptoms of both also tend to flare up for short periods then go into remission. Neither has a cure that can completely resolve the condition. For these reasons, people often confuse IBD with inflammatory bowel syndromes. However, the two conditions are different in the following ways. IBD is more severe condition that may lead to a number of complications including malnutrition and damage to the bowel. IBD occurs due to an overactive immune system which leads to inflammation throughout the gut and gastrointestinal tract. IBS usually develops due to digestive problem or an oversensitive gut. Treating IBD involves medication that reduces inflammation. People with IBS can reduce their symptoms by making changes to their diet or lifestyle. Research has also linked its Richia coli to Crohn's disease. Although there is currently no single confirmed cause of IBD, there are several potential factors that can increase a person's risk of developing each of the conditions within inflammatory bowel disease or IBD. Environmental factors such as diet, 
and exposure to microorganisms have a causal role. Alcohol, contraceptives, and tobacco have also been implicated. A genetic disease is also considered. A chronic Im immune system dysregulation is also implicated. A defect in gut mucosal barrier which increases exposure to intestinal microbes as well as pro-inflammatory substances is a potential etiologic factor related to immune dysregulation. Geographical region People who live in urban areas and industrial countries have a higher risk of getting inflammatory bowel disease. Those with white color jobs are also more likely to develop the disease. This can be partially explained by lifestyle choices and diet. People who live in industrialized countries tend to eat more fat and processed food. Inflammatory bowel disease is also more common among people living in northern climates where it's often cold. Gender. In general, IBD affects both genders equally. Ulcerative colitis is more common among men, while Crohn's disease is more common among women. Pathophysiology and differential diagnosis. Ulcerative colitis is a mucosal process which the colonic and subcolonic mucosa and submucosa are infiltrated with inflammatory cells. Mucosa may be atrophic and creep abscesses are common. Mucosa are friable and multiple pseudopolyps. Ulcerative colitis, if long-standing, foreshortened colon and mucosa is replaced by scar. Octitis, ulcerative colitis of the rectum. Proctosigmoiditis, ulcerative colitis involving the rectum and the sigmoid colon. Left-sided colitis, it's an ulcerative colitis involving the rectum and the left colon. Pancolitis, from the rectum to the bearing length of left colon and extending to the proximal of the splenic flexure. Pancolitis is a form of ulcerative colitis that affects the entire large intestine or bowel. It is a type of inflammatory bowel disease. Its full name is pan ulcerative colitis and is also sometimes known as total colitis or universal colitis. Ulcerative colitis. It doesn't affect small intestine but may demonstrate inflammatory changes to the terminal ileum or known as backward, backwash elitis. Key features of ulcerative colitis. There is a continuous involvement of the colon and the rectum. Rectal sparing and skip lesions suggest a Crohn's disease. Symptoms are related to the degree of mucosal inflammation and extent of the colitis. Patient typically complains of bloody diarrhea and crampy abdominal pain. Proctitis may produce tenesmus. Severe abdominal pain and fever raise the concern of fulminant colitis or toxic megacolon. Ulcerative colitis. Physical findings are non-specific and range from minimal abdominal tenderness and distension to frank peritonitis. In the non-emergent setting, the diagnosis is made by colonoscopy and mucosal biopsy. Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease is a transmural inflammatory process that can affect any part of the gastrointestinal tract from the mouth 
to the anus. Characteristic pathologic findings. You can see mucosal ulcerations and inflammatory inflammatory cell infiltrates and non-cachating granulomas. Crohn's disease, fibrosis, strictures, and fistulas either on the colon or intestines are seen. Endoscopic findings, deep serpiginous ulcers, cobblestone appearance, skip lesions, and rectal sparing are common. Symptoms of Crohn's disease depends on the severity of the inflammation and or fibrosis and the location of the inflammation in the GIT. You may see diarrhea, crumpy abdominal pain, fever, as seen in acute inflammation. Obstruction due to stricture, weight loss due to obstruction and protein loss, pain, swelling, drainage from fistula or abscesses for perianal Crohn's disease. Physical findings of Crohn's are related to the size and severity of the, the, of the disease. 15% 15 of cases differentiation of ulcerative colitis from Crohn's disease is impossible. Serologic mars, markers are also employed but needs prospective study. The ASCA and the PANCA. ASCA anti-saccharomyces cerebiciae antibody and PANCA or perinuclear antibody. So the symptoms of inflammatory bowel disease are fever, night sweats, vomiting, kidney stones, skin disorders, joint pains, fatigue, inflammation of the eyes, canker sores, lack of appetite, nausea, stomach pain, cramps, weight loss, blood in the stool, diarrhea, difficult bowel movements, income bowel movements, pus and, or mucus on the stools, irregular periods in females. So, to recapitulate, what are the symptoms of inflammatory bowel disease? Diarrhea, diarrhea, which occurs when affected parts of the bowel can reabsorb water. Bleeding ulcers, which may cause blood to show up in the stool or hematochisia. Inflammatory Inflammatory bowel disease may also show stomach pain, cramping, and bloating due to bowel obstruction, weight loss, and anemia, which can cause delayed growth or development in children. It may also show canker sores in their mouth. Sometimes ulcer and fissures also appear around the genital area or anus. Inflammatory bowel disease can also be associated with problems outside of the digestive system such as eye inflammation, skin disorders, and arthritis. The symptoms of IBD may vary according to the type, occasion, and severity. People might experience periods when symptoms worsen or flares and periods with few symptoms or no symptoms, remission. Flares may, be var may vary in amount, intensity, and duration. According to the CDC, the following symptoms are common to both the main types of IBD. Bloody, blood in the stool, persistent diarrhea, fatigue, and weight loss. IBD may also lead to symptoms outside the digestive system including fever, joint pain, and skin conditions. IBD can make the effects of menstruation more severe and that IBD symptoms may also get worse during menstruation. IBD also increases a woman's risk of iron deficiency anemia. How is inflammatory bowel disease diagnosed? To diagnose IBD, your doctor will first ask you questions about your family's medical history and your bowel movement. A physical examination may then be followed 
by one or more diagnostic tests. Stool sample and blood test. This test can be used to look for infections and other diseases. Blood test can also sometimes be used to distinguish between Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. However, blood test alone can't be used to diagnose IBD. Barium enema. A barium enema is an x-ray exam of the colon and small intestine. In the past, this type of test was often used but now other tests have largely replaced it. Flexible sigmoidoscopy and colonoscopy. These procedures use a camera on the end of a thin flexible probe to look at the colon. The camera is inserted through the anus. It allows your doctor to look for ulcers, fistulas, and other damage in the rectum and colon. A colonoscopy can examine the entire length of the large intestine. A sigmoidoscopy examines only the last 20 inches of the large intestine, the sigmoid colon. During these procedures, a small sample of the bowel wall will sometimes be taken. This is called a biopsy. Examining the biopsy under the microscope can be used to diagnose IBD. Capsule in this endoscopy. This test inspects the small intestine which is much harder to examine than the large intestine. For the test, you swallow a small capsule containing a camera. As it moves through your small intestine, it takes pictures. Once you pass the camera in your stool, the pictures can be seen on a computer. This test is only used when other tests have failed to find the cause of Crohn's disease symptoms. Plain film or x-ray. A plain abdominal x-ray is used in emergency situation where intestine rupture is su suspected. Computer tomography and magnetic resonance imaging are also used. CT scans are basically computerized x-rays. They create a more detailed image than a standard x-ray. This makes them useful for examining the small intestine. They can also detect complications of IBD. MRI use magnetic fields to, to form images of the body. They are safer than X-ray. MRIs are especially helpful in examining soft tissues and detecting fistulas. Both MRIs and CT scans can be used to determine how much of the intestine is affected by the IBD? How is inflammatory bowel disease treated? There are a number of different treatments for IBD. Medications Anti-inflammatory drugs are the first step in IBD treatment. These drugs decrease inflammation of the digestive tract. However, they have many side effects. Anti-inflammatory drugs used for IBD include standard dose mesalamine, sulfasalazine, and its byproducts, and corticosteroids. Immune suppressants or immunomodulators prevent the immune system from attacking the bowel and causing inflammation. These groups include drug that block TNF. TNF is a chemical produced by the immune system that causes inflammation. Excess TNF in the blood is normally black, but in people with IBD, higher levels of TNF can lead to more inflammation. Another medication, tofacitinib or Seljans, is a newer option that works in a unique way to reduce inflammation. Immune suppressant can have many side effects including rashes and infections. Antibiotics are used to kill bacteria that may trigger or aggravate IBD symptoms. Antidiarrheal drugs and laxative can also be used to treat IBD symptoms. Lifestyle choices. Lifestyle choices are important when you have IBD. 
Drinking plenty of fluids helps to compensate for those lost in your stool. Avoiding dairy products and stressful situation also improve symptoms. Exercising and quitting smoking can further improve your health. Supplements, vitamin and mineral supplements can help with nutritional deficiencies. For example, iron supplements can treat anemia. Talk to your doctor before adding any new supplements to your diet. Surgery. Surgery can sometimes be necessary for people with IBD. Some IBD surgeries include stricture plasty to widen a narrowed bowel, closure, or removal of fistulas. Removal of affected portion of the intestines for people with Crohn's disease. Removal of the entire colon and rectum for severe cases of ulcerative colitis. Routine colonoscopy is used to monitor for colon cancer, since those with IBD are at a higher risk for developing it. How can inflammatory bowel disease be prevented? The hereditary causes of IBD can be prevented. However, you may be able to reduce your risk of developing IBD or prevent a relapse by eating healthy foods, exercising regularly, quit, quitting smoking. IBD can cause some discomfort, but there are ways you can manage the disease and still live a healthy, active lifestyle. It can also be helpful to talk to others who understand what you're going through. Medical therapy is focused on reducing or preventing that inflammation. What are the possible complications of inflammatory bowel disease? Possible complications of IBD include malnutrition with resulting weight loss, colon cancer, bowel obstruction, fistulas or ulcers that go through the bowel wall, creating a hole between different parts of the digestive tract, intestinal rupture or perforations. Possible complications. In rare cases, a severe bout of IBD can make you go into shock. This can be life-threatening. Shock is usually caused by blood loss during a long, sudden episodes of bloody diarrhea. This is done by Dr. Ray J. Libakin. If you like to hear more updates, please subscribe my channel and click the notification bell thank you